I'm sure everybody's familiar with VMware. I'm sure you're relatively familiar with Azure. This is an interesting moment where we have joined the two together and we really are meeting sysadmins where they are. I think Microsoft's always done a really good job of meeting developers where they are. We haven't done as good of a job as at meeting administrators where they are. So I always think this is that nice union of sysadmins who might have a, a very hefty VMware environment and they may have to think about a cloud transformation journey into to Azure. So these are all of the great ways to reach me. I'm very active on Twitter. I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, feel free to connect if you've got questions, if you wanna be glued into the right teams to help you make this be a reality within your world, always happy to do that. Let's see if I can, there we go. So let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the intro and the background. So, there are a lot of different migration triggers at the present time, and we've seen this be kind of sped up with COVID, right? So there's the need for speed, there's the cost and complexity considerations, as well as the people and processes components. So that's everything from software and hardware end of life cycle, urgent capacity needs, the center contract expirations, um, things like project costs, resource and timelines, application refactoring or re-architecting, that is always what takes the, the biggest amount of time. And that's what uh, prevents that need for speed. There's always this whole notion of we have to refactor, we have to split up this monolithic application. You don't now, which is awesome. And then you can think about using Azure VMware solution for business continuity and to make sure that there is no downtime as you migrate workloads from on-prem into Azure. Um, I often talk a lot about this as well. So. I think a lot of enterprises were freaked out with this whole notion of cloud. They had to embrace IaaS out the gate, all these different nuances, different terms, things that they weren't familiar with. The beauty of Azure VMware solution is you take that platform, you put it into Azure. It's the same VMware platform that we've all known for a really long period of time. You won't actually say the amount of time because it varies, right? Uh, a lot of us are, are have done it for years and years and years. Some of us haven't done it for the same amount of time, but the beauty is it's that, that gold standard that I think enterprises really love. Um, and then you can think about bringing your operational best practices, and then you can grow that cloud competency at a time that makes the most sense to you. So this is an interesting fusion of sorts related to how Microsoft has embraced VMware in the past. So in the, in the past, you'd think of them as being direct competitors. Now everybody's playing in the same sandbox. We are actually uh, embracing this partnership at a very uh, great pace. There's a lot of innovation that's happening within the engineering teams. So this really allows you to run your native VMware workloads on Azure. So customers can now migrate VMs from on-premises into Azure using HCX and vMotion, really awesome technologies. I think once I figured out what vMotion was, I kind of just, my jaw just dropped. Well, now you can think about using that same technology and migrating your VMs from on-prem into Azure. Um, and everything lands on that hypervisor you know and you love and you trust and you just can't get enough of, right? So it's VMware in the cloud. So customers can now seamlessly run, manage, and secure their applications and also bring those best practices into Azure without having to freak out about all of the change, right? So I've spent a lot of time working with customers prior to my current role, and there was always this level of anxiety. My role's being obsolete. I don't have any validity as time moves forward. How can I see myself move forward? And the idea here is to freak out less and realize that there's now a platform that you, know, your, you and your company could choose to have workloads um, kind of land on inside of Azure. So the iteration we're on right now is different than the first go round. The first go round was Azure VMware Solution by Cloud Simple. Now it's just Azure VMware Solution. This service GA'd last September. It was available in US East, West, Europe West, and Australia. As of now, look at the footprint, right? It's all over and there are more regions coming online. So depending upon what your operational style is where your offices are located, you could think about deploying AVS in a number of different regions and then use the Azure backbone to help you kind of tie things together from a networking perspective. So these are kind of the, the use cases, right? So it's data center expansion, reduction or retirement, speed and simplification of migration into kind of that hybrid cloud model, disaster recovery and business continuity, app and business modernization. So you've got maybe an idea here where you could take your developers and they could start making use of services like Azure Active Directory. Um, things that you wouldn't have thought of prior to now, 
because you're not having to embrace all of Azure. You're not having to, to drink from that ridiculous fire hose, right? You can take apart what you need and your developers tend to like that reality versus um, kind of central IT sort of stopping the whole process. Um, we always recommend planning and deploying, right? So there's a lot of great tooling will, that will assess your environment as exists on-prem right now. And then you can go ahead and create the ABS software design data center environment from the portal in just a few hours. So that's kind of a cool reality from there. The migration patterns really are the sweet spot. You get a chance to take those VMs on-prem, migrate them into Azure. So if you're getting out of your data center colo contract, you don't wanna have to worry about um, you know, end of life maintenance and support for your hardware. You wanna get out of that sort of CapEx model more into an OpEx model. That's where this starts to become a really compelling conversation. So um, it's kind of cool in the sense that it's using HCX, which is hybrid cloud exchange. And that's the appliance that takes your VM from on-prem and moves it into Azure. And dependent upon the version of vSphere you're on, it could be a live migration, it could be a cold migration or a bulk migration. Those are all three supported migration patterns, but I think the live one is the, the coolest. Um, then you know, you've got the Microsoft, I guess, cloud native components, right? So you've got the elasticity of the cloud, You've got all of the different Azure services. You've got all the different networking, compute, storage. I mean, the sky is the limit, right? It's kind of like in Cheap and Unlocked. Um, that's always the joke I make. It reminds me of when you beat a really hard level in a video game, you get the achievement unlocked. That's kind of what this becomes. And then you can also think about using your VMware tooling. So the native vSphere experience exists in Azure. There's certain things you can't control and that's just because of the fact that we are providing this as a service to you. So you couldn't control your ESXi hosts, right? But Microsoft will control that and Microsoft will manage it for you. So you can think about controlling the sides of things that are a little bit more interesting, I feel. Um, you can think about using vSAN for storage, NSXT for networking, and then HCX for migration. This also helps you related to the kind of 1.0 of your cloud transformation, moving it to 2.0, 3.0, et cetera, because we'll support this for indefinitely, right? There's no you know, line in the sand, a year down the road, we're going to stop supporting this. No, the idea is we now have a platform for a lot of enterprises to take the, the, the skills, the tooling that they've invested in over the years and move it into Azure.